I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today we're going to talk about tools. This is going to be an ongoing uh, series, so expect to see these about once a week. I have some tools that don't have a large enough number from any one manufacturer that makes it a, a grouping, so I'm just going to lump them all together into uh, a generic uh, title of tools that I own. This is a Miller Falls half inch drill motor. It's a dynamite catalog number 912 model D half inch drill, 115 volts, 4.9 amps, 450 RPM. It's an old one, but it's got really good design features on it. It has the pipe handle, the D handle, and the, the pistol grip. So you can really get a good grip on it and do a good job. I think it's a little better than the uh, smaller half inch Black & Decker that I own. It came to me with a huge amount of cord on it. does need to be cleaned up and I think some oiling would be in order. It's been leaking some oil out of the gear case. But it's a nice drill. I don't use it much, but it's there. This is the electric drill that I've owned the longest. It's a Thor. It's an antique bugger. 5 16 drill. Model number 4199. Serial number 121472A. 110 volts. Made by the Independent Pneumatic Tool Company. Chicago, Illinois. My dad gave me this drill. It's eminently designed to be rebuildable. This case comes off so that you can get to the brushes and you can replace the cord quite easily. Actually I've done that. This yellow cord is not the original. It has been beat up and repaired multiple times. You can see the marks on the D handle where it's been welded back together again. But this was built at the time that things were not thrown away when they were broken. It was repaired and put back into service. This old drill motor only has one fault. It has a dead spot on the armature. Every once in a while, it'll land on that spot on the armature and it won't turn. To make it work, you just turn the chuck a little bit and away it goes. Dad gave me this. Man, I, I don't really know how old I was when I got this. So I've had it for at least 50 years. At least 50 years, possibly closer to 55. And it was an antique when I got it. It was made by the Independent Pneumatic Tool Company in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it's a model 4199. 1214724. It's a 516th drill, runs on 110 volts. There's some other labels that were on it, but they have long since given up the ghost. But it's a it's a cool drill. They use this drill to drill holes in concrete one inch in diameter. It's a 516 drill motor. That's how they broke the handle. They had a bar stuck through the uh, handle and they were using that to push down with two guys while they drilled holes in the concrete floor. That was back before they had uh, hammer drills. They had pneumatic uh, drivers, but the maintenance department didn't have one at the time. And that would have been uh, 
probably late 50s when they broke it. This is a model 958 powerhouse drill. It's quarter inch capacity, 2.6 amps, 115 volts AC or DC. 2000 RPMs made by the McGraw Edison Company, Boonville, Missouri. It works, but it's really noisy. Needs to have the gears gone through. I think it needs some serious grease. This is a Fury quarter inch drill. 2.5 amps, made by the Ram Tool Corporation, Chicago, Illinois. It's a model number F-11-265. 917 uh, has a no load RPM of 2000 RPMs. It needs a new cord. It's a nice running little drill, just needs to have a new cord. It has that locking button on the trigger, but the cord is definitely smoked. Somebody prior to me cut off the or pulled out the grounding tab. This little Chicago electric power tool is one of those impulse buys. I needed a diamond bit and this one came with a full set of them. Cost less than buying the diamond bits individually separately. So I went ahead and bought it. It's a Harbor Freight tool. It does work, but has no power. I kept it because it's a convenient place to keep the tool bits, but other than that, this is absolutely worthless. picked up this Rockwell drill motor quite by accident. I was uh, looking for a boat for my wife and I to go out on Lake Lydia, which is just a little lake south of here. And as I was driving down the road, I saw a sign that said, boat for sale. So I turned down the driveway and went back in. There was a nice group of people down there having a garage sale. The boat wasn't anything that I wanted, but as I was looking around the garage sale, they had this drill motor. It was in this package which always adds a little value to the mix and evidently somebody had it so that they could polish something because it came with this little buffing I think they call that a bob when I asked if I could plug it in they said sure so I did it worked it came home with me it has a handle on it, it has a, a, an auxiliary handle, but it's never been taken out of the case. I think they bought it to buff whatever they wanted to buff, they buffed it and then that was it. That was the job and it was done and they didn't need to do it anymore, so they stopped doing it. Dad and I used jigsaws to cut out outlets and, and junction box holes and all kinds of things. So when I was working as his apprentice, I used a lot of jigsaws. This is one that Dad bought. It's not a really high quality one. It's uh, third horsepower, master mechanic, variable speed jigsaw. Not real expensive, but it still works. I inherited it from Dad, and I kept it. This is a Shopmate. 
uh, quick stroke saber saw model number 180 type 1 serial number GN 13 GN 123392 made by the uh, GW Murphy Industries Portable Electric Tools Division Geneva Illinois 2300 one inch strokes per minute 115 volt AC 3.0 amps 25 to 60 cycles it only has on and off but it's a good solid little machine and this is one that came out of the dumpster when we moved into the house here. If you have any questions or you'd like to make a suggestion for a video in the future, please drop a note in the comments below. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.